Welcome to Kermit Uncut. It's the end of 2016. It's the time that I traditionally do the rundown of my best and worst movies of the year, top 10 and bottom 10. As always, we've broken it up into four blogs, and I'm sure there'll be a load of stuff in here that you disagree with, and I'd love to hear from you what your opinion is of the best and worst films of 2016. However, let's start off with numbers 10 to number 6 of my top films released in the UK in 2016. Now, as far as I'm concerned, 2016 was a really terrific year. I mean, wonderful films released in the UK in 2016. And in fact, I've cheated. So I've given myself, at number 10, a joint 10th place in my top 10 list, which means it is, in fact, a list which goes up to 11. But, you know, spinal tap, that's perfectly OK. So at number 10, my joint 10th place for best film released in the UK in 2016. Firstly, Amorosanti's United Kingdom. Huge fan of Amorosanti. This is an important story and really elegantly told with a performance by David Yellowo, which I think is worthy of awards, not just nominations, but awards wins. Not sure whether that will happen, but I really, really want it to be recognised. I am ready to serve you because I love my people. I love this land. But I love my wife. However, tied in 10th place, Mia Hansen loves things to come with a standout performance by Isabelle Huppert. As far as I'm concerned, Isabelle Huppert is pretty much the best actor working in cinema at the moment. But the great thing about Things to Come is that it's an understated performance. I mean, yes, she can do extremities. Yes, she can take us places that we've never been before. But in Things to Come, it's a very, very low-key performance, a very personal film for Mia Hansen Love, and something that is really worth checking out. Quand j'y pense, j'ai retrouvé ma liberté. Une liberté totale. C'est extraordinaire. On to number nine, and it's an animation, Your Name, directed by Makoto Shinkai, who has been hailed in certain quarters as the new Miyazaki, which is frankly a title which does him no favours at all, since his work is so completely different. Your Name was a runaway success in Japan. I think it topped the box office for something like three months, you know, just stayed at the very, very top of the box office. Over here, it had a peculiar release. It was kind of a small release, then a big single day release in which it broke some box office records. Everyone I know who's seen the film absolutely loves it. I want more people to see it. It's a body swap story about a boy from Tokyo and a girl from a remote mountain town who swap their lives and discover things about each other's lives. And it's really intelligent and thought-provoking, but the animation is just sweeping and wonderful. And if you get the choice, I would see it in the original version with subtitles, because I thought the original version was really, really terrific. However, if it's going to be the dub version, it doesn't matter as long as you get to see it. Your name at number nine. <laughs> <laughs> On to number eight. Now, one of the brilliant things about 2016 is it's been such a great year for films made in the UK. And at number eight, I, Daniel Blake, which is the second Palm Door winner for Ken Loach. He won some years ago for The Wind That Shakes the Barley. You must continue to look for work or your benefit payments will be frozen. I, Daniel Blake, is the story of a joiner who suffered a heart attack and can't go back to work but is faced with an incredible bureaucracy when it comes to claiming benefits. The film has brilliant performances by Dave Johns as Daniel Blake and Hayley Squires, who is really powerful as the single mother. There is a scene in a food bank which has already passed into legend, which is one of the most profoundly moving things I have ever seen in the cinema. The film actually raised political debate. People were talking about it on news programs. Politicians were discussing it. It became more than just a film. It did the thing that Loach has always talked about cinema doing, which is breaking out of the confines of cinema and becoming part of a wider debate. But from my point of view, the most important thing is just what a great film it is, how well made it is, how much it reminds you of the extraordinary talent of Ken Loach, whose career goes right back to Kez and Kathy Come Home. And now he's in his 80s, he's doing some of his best work. Well, I'm not gonna give up. When you lose your self-respect, you're done for. On to number seven, and a real surprise for me, Julieta by Pedro Almodovar being sat next to Ken Loach, somebody who's always thought of as a great humanist director, somebody who understands his characters. Well, for me, Julieta does exactly that. Stylish, visually wonderful to look at, terrific central performances, and an absolutely heartbreaking story, but told with real passion and real sensitivity. Querida Antia, voy a contarte todo lo que no tuve ocasión de contarte. Porque eras una niña. 
que me resultaba demasiado doloroso. O por simple pudor. All of which brings us to number six. And I've been very strict this year that I'm just looking at films which were released in the UK in 2016. And at number six is Room, which some people may think was a film of last year, because obviously this year it won an Oscar for Brie Larson because it was released in America in 2015. It opened here early in the year. And it still has the power to astonish and amaze me. Yes, Brie Larson's performance is terrific. Lenny Abramson has done such a great job with that script, which is obviously written by Emma Donoghue, who wrote the book upon which the film is based. The most remarkable thing about Room, however, is, I know we've said this before, it's just not the film you think it's going to be. It looks like a film about a woman and a child held captive in a tiny room by a hideous monster. And yet, it's so much more than that. Not just in terms of the narrative, but it's so much more than that in terms of the sensitivity with which it deals with that story. It is about an entire world existing in an enclosed space. Brilliant use of music, wonderfully directed with real sensitivity, and Brie Larson winning for Best Actress, completely the right choice. Old Nick, we call him Old Nick. I don't know what his real name is, but he pretended his dog was sick. What's the dog's name? Jack, there wasn't a dog. He was trying to trick me. So that's it, numbers 10 to number 6, joint 10th place, United Kingdom and things to come. At number 9, the Japanese animation Your Name. At number 8, Ken Loach's I, Daniel Blake. At number 7, Almodovar's Julieta. And at number 6, Room. I'll do number 5 to number 1 next week. Coming up next on Kermode Uncut, number 10 to number 6, in my worst films of 2016.